Hello Internet. It is December 2021, and as you can see here, I did nine videos on graph neural networks, on the coding of graph neural networks, and which software libraries will help you coding your task specific graph neural network. But before we start with the code, we have to understand the theory, the basic, the foundation. And there is a beautiful uh, open course I would recommend to you. This is by, let me have a look, Professor Juri Leskovich from Stanford University. You find all his lecture of 2021. This class is called CS224W for Winter, Stanford EDU. You will find on the YouTube channel Stanford Online, one word, no space in between, where you can follow his whole lecture about machine learning with graphs. Uh, this is the best presentation, the best online course I found, the best free course you can follow. And I show you here one of his slides. I think in, in total there are about 800 slides for the whole course. You can download the slides, you can watch the spoken representation by Professor. So highly recommend this to you. And of course, it always starts with the basic and the basic is data. Whatever we do in machine learning, data is the foundation. And the better the data is presented, the more intelligently we have a representation of the data and of our specific task, then the easier the machine learning or the artificial intelligence application is to encode. So you are familiar that, for example, in chemistry, all the different molecules have, if in this very simplified uh, structure, a, a graph structure. You have a knowledge graph from Google. If you're interested in where a decade ago, Google started to apply knowledge graph for some semantic encoding. But of course, if you are driving an autonomous car like a Tesla or any other, uh, autonomous car, you know that you have, for example, eight cameras and they record the environment be behind you, in front of you, on the left side, right side, whatever, up and down the road. You have to identify what is a street, what is a car, what is the sun, what are the mountains, what are the objects that come close to you, what is the maximum velocity. So you have a disease pathway that has a graph structure. If you work in virology, you also have cell-to-cell -cell similarity networks. So graphs are everywhere. And if we say, hey, we want to apply now our machine learning repertoire we have from vision technology or from NLP, now we wanted to apply it on a more topological challenging task because this is not an Euclidean matrix uh, a matrix that has a distance measure, but this is non-Euclidean and it is a little bit more complicated. If you have a, a pixel photo, you have Euclidean symmetry. If you have words in a sentence, you have a linear sequence, but this here is more challenging. The complexity, the topological complexity is higher. So what can we apply from our machine learning algorithms that we know from vision technology now to graph neural networks. And the first is here an example. We want to identify the, the nodes that are here shaded in gray. And we want to say, hey, given the, the network structure, the data structure, the information encoded in the nodes, the information encoded on the edges, the strength of the edges, the, the structural form of our network, is, is the probability that this belongs to the group A or this belongs to the group B? What is the probability density if we have some calculation, if we have some machine learning, if we have a set of training objects, what will our machine learning model predict? And of course, we need features. Features are familiar with the classical graph here, like node degree, node centrality, and all the other 38 uh, features that you have in a classical graph theory. But what we are interested in is, just give me a second, give me a second, yeah. Traditional machine learning for graphs. No, we didn't need this. Here we go. What we are interested in is that we cross out the feature engineering that we have, and we want to have some representation learning for our graph neural networks. This means that the system automatically learns the features. So how to do this? Easy. 
if you have some idea about NLP, natural language programming, you know that we have an embedding. In NLP, we have a word embedding in a topological space. Now, the same here, we have a graph representation learning where the goal is to have a feature learning for machine learning with graphs. And what you do, you have also the embedding of a node of a graph or whatsoever the complexity you can choose. And the idea is that the similarity of the embeddings between the nodes indicates also the similarity in the network. And to show you this on a visual representation, here we go. We have here our graph data representation, and we have here done a function that encodes our data in a topological embedding space. And the goal is to encode, encode the nodes so that the similarity in the embedding space here, the dot product, for example, approximates the similarity in the graph. So if you have here node one and node two close, together, whatever is this non-Euclidean representation, you want to have an embedding, an embedding space, a topological space, where these two nodes are also relatively close together, whatever the closeness, the, the near matrix is within this topological space. So, and now we switch to node embeddings. As I told you, you have a function f, you have your graph structure, your data structured in a graph, and you want to find a representation where the embeddings are such that similar nodes in the graph are also embedded close together. So this red cluster here, you find this red cluster close together here in a two-dimensional node embedding representation. And before we start with this, this is exactly the theoretical background. If you are not familiar, I would highly recommend you go and have a look at Stanford University Machine Learning with Graph. This is the best course I found, best free course I found to get, to give you the fundamental knowledge you need for the encoding. And here in my first video, I showed you graph neural networks. What the hell? Why do I need them? We go a little bit. Why are they different than the vision networks we have? Why are they different to the NLP advances we had with BERT transformer models? What is the difference here on a graph based no, uh, level? Second video, uh, no, that's too, too complicated, too complicated. <laughs> it's a time travel to 2016. This was a very important date where Thomas Kipf had his idea about a graph convolution network. You are familiar with convolution from the vision technology, but he now applied here a graph convolution network, the encoding of his idea in a pure Keras code. If you are new to no, graph no, 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 still no, no, I don't want to see the video. Uh, you have here an implementation in pure te uh, TensorFlow Keras code, but if you want to make it a little bit easier, uh, we have libraries, and these libraries provide already coded graph neural network models for you that will do the job that you are looking for. They are task-specific models. You have to choose a model that will do the job for you. They are already coded, they are in the library, and there are two libraries I can really recommend. And the first one is PyTorch Geometric version 2 from November, end of November 2021. Of course, it runs on PyTorch. And if you are a fan of PyTorch and or TensorFlow, the second library is really recommended, and it is the Deep Graph Library, DGL, for deep learning on graphs. So we have multiple hidden stacked layers doing the analysis for you, you the encoding where we look for the weights these two libraries here are really really the backbone if you want to apply already coded graph neural network models for your work now on the development front i mean these two are constantly developed but on the google development front there's Jax. 
Jax, does it spark joy for you is a video where I go a little bit into the development phase of Jax. How does it combine the automated differentiation functionality, the ultra fast coding with the new compiler, with the XLA compiler Google developed? They put these two expertise together, they form Jax, and Jax is really interesting if you're familiar with NumPy or SciPy. This is really maybe something for you if you run applications fast on a multi-GPU or multi-TPU, a tensor processing unit cluster. There's a very nice video of TensorFlow itself explaining JAX and I reduced it to one minute and I want to show you the code of JAX explained in one minute. How can you understand JAX? if you are familiar with NumPy. And then of course, there's the library, the Google library or the DeepMind library for graph neural networks operating on JAX. And this is the video I did on Giraffe. Giraffe is the application running on JAX for graph neural networks. But to tell you, it is currently in the version 0.0.02 development. So you can imagine about the majority of this library. So these are my nine videos I did on graph neural networks in November 2021. I hope it will provide some knowledge for you. If you're new, maybe have a look at the first two videos. If you're interested in the application, look at PyTorch Geometric or on Deep Graph Library. These two libraries I really recommend. If you're interested in ultra fast multi GPU, multi TPU code implementation, look at JAX. And if you want to run your graph neural networks with some, I think it's half a dozen. GNN models already implemented in Giraffe. Have a look at Giraffe if you can use these models here. But remember, uh, the data input, the data pipeline, the data presentation is here not part of Giraffe. You have to use some other Google specific libraries. Here, you can use either the TensorFlow uh, data pipeline or the PyTorch specific pipelines. And if you say, hey, I remember this from Databricks, no? do not they have a very specific data loader before their machine learning ecosystem, their machine learning capabilities? Yes, this is exactly it. So we have here graph neural networks now then on 10 videos. And I hope it will increase your knowledge. You will enjoy the representation. And I see you in the next video.